Uh, so my name's Amelia and I'm Policy and Public Affairs Manager and what I do and what the whole team is focused on is improving the treatment, care and support that stem cell transplant patients receive. So there's three key ways in which we do this. One is policy which is all about conducting research to understand where the gaps in patient care actually are and how we can tackle them. Two is public affairs um, which involves engaging with MPs and key decision makers to make sure that they really understand the importance of the stem cell donor register and the steps that we need to take to improve patient survival and quality of life. And then three is campaigning, um, which is all about mobilising our supporters to put a particular issue on the public agenda. So that might be asking them to sign a petition or email their MP, for example. Uh, stem cell transplant is a potentially life-saving treatment for somebody with a blood cancer or blood disorder, but it doesn't always work the first time round, and on occasion a patient's disease might come back, and it's in these circumstances that a clinician might decide that a second stem cell transplant is the patient's best hope of a cure. What happened back in July 2016 was that NHS England decided it wasn't able to fund second transplants, specifically for patients whose blood disorder disorder or blood disorder had relapsed um, more than a year after their first donor transplant and what this meant was that up to 20 patients a year in England were missing out on the treatment that could save their life. This obviously caused a huge amount of distress to patients and their families. We knew that people were alive and living really well because they'd had a second transplant and we knew that NHS England's decision went against the advice of the clinical community so it was a very serious situation and we had to take action very quickly. The Defend Second Transplants campaign called on the Secretary of State for Health to intervene and ensure that everybody who needed a second transplant was able to get one. So it ran for about seven months and during that time more than 25,000 supporters took action by signing a letter to Jeremy Hunt, by emailing their MP and by signing a petition. Alongside all of this we did a few other things. Um, so we coordinated a letter to the Times with leading clinicians to call on NHS England to reverse their decision and we worked very closely with MPs and um, the all-party parliamentary group on stem cell transplantation. A real highlight of that was a parliamentary debate back in January um, during which MPs made a really strong case of second transplants directly to the government. At the heart of everything was patients and a patient called Emma actually fronted our campaign and she had had a second transplant and basically wanted everybody to have the same chance as her. So one of the things that she did was meet the government minister responsible for second transplants and after that meeting the minister said she was a really powerful advocate for the cause which just goes to show the impact that patient stories can have. Um, in February everything finally came together and NHS England announced that it would start funding second stem cell transplants with immediate effect. So we were obviously delighted by this decision as were patients, their families and, and uh, our broader supporter base but we were also very conscious that it came too late for some patients. A stem cell transplant is just the beginning of a really long journey uh, towards recovery and after patients leave hospital they can face a whole range of physical, emotional and practical challenges um, and unfortunately we know that they don't always get the care and support that they need during this time. So just one example is research from Anthony Nolan has shown that of the people who need emotional and psychological support only half actually get it. So there's a big gap in service there. What it comes down to is the way in which um, post-transplant care services are planned and paid for or commissioned doesn't work for every single patient. Mm -hmm. So hospitals only receive sufficient funding for the first 100 days and then after that it becomes unclear who's actually responsible. And that's why our Who Cares campaign calls on health commissioners across the UK to review the services that they are providing, including the impact of that 100-day cut off and ultimately to work with Anthony Nolan and the clinical community on a plan to ensure that every patient gets the right care and support after a stem cell transplant. Our supporters are also helping by emailing their MP to raise awareness of the fact that a stem cell transplant um, is a, is a, can be a really tough thing um, but also to get some backing for our call for the review.